uh, thank you very much, presiding officer. As a preliminary, let me record my huge admiration for all who work in whatever capacity in the health and indeed the care sector. Nothing brought home to me how much theirs is a vacation than their commitment during that two-year-long pandemic. And that's where I'll start, the pandemic. Throughout the UK and the devolved health services and beyond to Europe, the pressures, the wearing of PPE, the restrictions on the usual business of our GP surgeries and hospitals was dramatically disrupted. The aftermath, we now have delays in playing catch-up in other areas of treatment. I recall the Borders General Hospital then dividing itself into two treatment areas, one for those with COVID, the other for emergency treatments. How the Chief Executive had to learn, along with colleagues, to adapt to this fast-evolving global virus. Other health treatments were postponed of necessity. Access to GP services was and remains to this day limited. To this day, our GP ambulance staff, our hospitals, are still of necessity taking precautionary COVID protections, all adding to delay. These years, of course, caused a backlog, as I've said, in treatments. And of course, delays for anyone. I listen to individual cases and have them myself is dreadful. But we must put this into the extraordinary context of the pandemic. I have never known one before, but apparently for the opposition, it is all yesterday's news. It is not. Context is fundamental. And it's not, I say to Ms. Mochran, an excuse. It is an explanation, and there's a world of difference. The Conservative motion doesn't mention this. Yet the continuing impact of the pandemic, the fact that protections are still required, that staff in both health and care sector are still having to take sick leave because they contract COVID, the ambulance drivers not only require the protections, but must sanitise the ambulances after each patient journey, that wards have to have extra cleaning, that GPs are limiting face-to-face -face consultations, even dentistry is trying to catch up, are all for the same reason. COVID is still among us, and all of this is fundamental to where we are today. The root cause as of now is the necessary postponement when COVID was at its height, the catching up needing to be done, the continuing protections, and all corroborated by the fact that in the English and Welsh NHS, the positions are worse, though I take no pleasure in saying that, because each individual rightly is a priority for treatment wherever they live. But the NHS is working through this. And as in quotes, normal times, close quotes, certain treatments, certain emergencies must take priority. And I say to Jackie Bailey, today, NHS borders confirm that 100% of patients in the borders who are diagnosed with cancer receive their treatment within the Scottish Government target of 31 days, that almost 97% of eligible patients who are given an urgent suspicion of cancer referral, I'm in mean my last minute, have received their treatment within the 60-day target. So I commend NHS borders. But the motion does not even dip its toe into the waters of Brexit as a consequence of which we lost staff in health and especially the care sector. So, which brings me to this. Let's have some honesty in this debate. Let's have some light and less heat. All governments struggled with the pandemic in both health and care sectors from early lockdown days till now. And vaccines have to be delivered on a mass scale, a huge demand of NHS services. COVID and Brexit, now compounded by reckless trust economic policies impacting on the health, the well-being and the safety of people in Scotland. And not a whisper from the Tories about any of that. I wonder why.